All right, guys. So I had a long weekend of training. I did about eight hours of Silat. And then today I did some Muay Thai and Jit. And I am exhausted. But I've come to do this video for you because I refuse to wait any longer. I really, really wanted to make this video. Very passionate about it. And this video is on Casey fighting method. But I'm using Casey as kind of a staple to cover a much more deep topic, which is self-defense versus combat sports, which is probably the biggest controversial subject in martial arts nowadays that I see. Anyway, let's just jump right in. I'll give you my thoughts after the intro. Pow, pow. Inside, inside fighting. Yeah, dangerous, dangerous martial arts. Pow, pow. Ooh, ah. So here we go. Self-defense, combat sports. Now, I am a combat sports athlete. The styles I have grown up doing are Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Sambo, I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu. I've been doing it over two decades. I did Muay Thai. Even the traditional martial arts I did were very combat sport oriented. Things like Dos de Paris where we have Weka, but we would do dog brother style sparring, which was full contact stick sparring with just a headgear. My teacher didn't even give us hand protection, to be honest with you, which was very rough. And Kyokushin, which is a traditional karate style, but it's bare knuckle and you're going full contact sparring every class. So I have always come from the perspective that if you're not sparring, it's not worth doing. That was that was my majority martial art, you know, kind of view of self-defense. And what I've come to realize is, yes, there's a very important element to sparring, but sparring and real confrontations are two completely different worlds to the point of only looking at combat sports as a self-defense solution, which is kind of what has happened. This is the controversy. Nowadays, whenever someone talks about self-defense, people are like, the only things that work are Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai, and boxing, and, and wrestling. And if you can't prove it in the ring, then it doesn't have value. I think that's a completely ludicrous position. And uh, again, I think that proving something in the ring, in an environment where you know the variables, where you know you're doing three rounds of five minutes each, where you know that you're on, on mats, where you're fighting a trained athlete, and you're training against somebody specific, there's so many variables that you can control within there and that you know about that it's a completely different thing than saying, this is going to come out of the blue. You don't know how many people, you don't know what kind of weapons, you don't know what the environment's going to be. Are they going to slam you on concrete? You don't know the legality of the situation if you do hurt the guy too much. And there's just so many things. You don't know how your adrenal stress response is going to respond, even if you're a world-class fighter, like uh, Anthony Smith, who said that, the guy who broke into his house, this like 5'10 meth head, was one of the toughest fights he's ever had. And this is a UFC top 10 fighter. So people don't realize it's just a different world. And the problem with sparring, again, like jits, for example, again, two decades of jujitsu. I'm a black belt. I'm a legit good jujitsu guy. Jujitsu lacks nowadays, especially a lot of the elements that real fighting has. It's funny. People bash Kyoku Shin for no face punching. Jujitsu has no punching, no kicking, no striking. Is it still a great element of fighting? Yes, but in and of itself, it is not a complete self-defense system anymore. Not how it's taught, not competition schools. And what you do in combat sports is you learn to take your combat sport and compete against other people who are doing your combat sport. And in doing so, you lose a lot of the idea of what real self-defense is. For example, a jiu-jitsu match could be five to 10 minutes. There's no striking. You could start butt scooting at people on the ground and pull guard. There's just all these things that are so detached from reality. And if you take a person like that, you give them an adrenal stress response and start cracking them in the head. A lot of the jujitsu goes out the window. Jujitsu at a high level after blue belt, purple, brown, black is training you to beat other jujitsu guys. And then on a superficial level, it's treating you to beat other martial artists in a controlled environment. But it is not necessarily teaching you to deal with a high stress, high pressure environment out on the street that you are not able to control the variables in. And so I, I, I believe this to be true of most martial arts. Again, when you look at how people spar in Muay Thai, there's this kind of relaxed like play because you know you have a long period of time. You know you're not trying to take the person out in the first five seconds. And in a real confrontation, what's happening is the guy is bulldozing you a lot of the time, grabbing you and just cracking you in the head. And sure, your training will help you. It will benefit you greatly because you've dealt with stress. You've dealt with punches. You've dealt with all these things. That's the great basis of combat sports for self-defense. They give you that mindset where you've been in high-stress situations. But again, if you're not dealing in your training with those high-stress, overwhelming situations, which is essentially, I'm going to put you in the class. 
You're not going to know when. Two people are just going to charge you and start punching you in the head like maniac. Now, they don't need to hurt you. They can put gloves on. They can open smack you. But if you're not dealing with those kind of drills, as I call them, you're not really dealing with self-defense. And so KC fighting method is a true self-defense style. It gets a lot of hate. And again, people will always say the same thing. Try and beat a Muay Thai fighter with it. Try and beat a jiu-jitsu guy with it. As a Muay Thai fighter, as a jiu-jitsu guy, chances are you're not fighting me in a street fight. Chances are you're not going up against John Jones in a street fight. Chances are you, the person who's training Casey Fighting Method, are not training eight hours a day to do this as a professional living. You're training a couple hours a week, three to four hours a week, and you want to get effective in a high-stress situation to reduce as many variables that might get you killed as possible. And that's what real self-defense training is. It's for a regular person to be able, with minimal hours, to adapt themselves, not to become an, a professional athlete, to adapt themselves and to deal with high stress situations and to reduce the variables as much as possible so that they can protect themselves in that situation. And so again, I'm just going to get this out the way. I'm going to talk about Casey right now. I'm going to say that I think it's a fantastic style in many ways. It does have some shortcomings. We'll jump into them. But I've talked enough. I've ranted. Let's just look at some stuff from Casey right here. History. There have been many fighting styles created for warfare, sport, fitness, and much more. One of these is KC. KC, short for KC Fighting Method, or KFM, was developed by Justo Diegues and Andy Norman. It originated in Spain in the 1980s and has since gained popularity worldwide for its distinctive approach to combat. What sets KC apart is its adaptability and real-world focus. It was initially designed for self-defense in close combat and confined spaces. Okay, so let's just let's just jump into this a little bit. Number one, if you looked at a lot of those movements, they really do look like what you would see in Filipino martial arts, silat, even in the Muay Thai guard. If you look, you have a lot of these similar guards. Again, I talk about it, I call it the rhino, the cape. It's like I'm pulling a cape across myself, spear. But you'll see that in Muay Thai. You'll see it in Filipino martial arts. You'll see it in Silat. All these kind of movements in Silat protect you. What it seems like Casey did is it took that, it modernized it, and it created an entire system around it, which, in my opinion, the pensador, as they call it, this kind of position, and I might be doing it different than they do it. I do it like this. I know they do it like this, and they keep it more active. Having a go-to guard that protects you regardless of what the person throws is the single most important thing when you're looking at teaching an average person how to defend themselves in the street. Boxing is fantastic, but I have to teach you how to slip. I have to teach you how to weave. I have to teach you how to parry. I have to teach you how to check. I have to teach you all these things as opposed to this, which brings you in and it says, I don't care what the person throws. We have our position we go to in a high stress situation. I don't want to sit there and have to read whether you're throwing a jab whether you're throwing a cross, whether you're throwing a kick, I'm just driving in at you. That's why I call it the rhino, but they call it the pensador. I'm just driving in at you with all my force, covering as much of myself as possible to protect myself, to keep myself safe, and to cause you damage in the process. That's why elbows, which this system is built around, and systems like Silat, or at least the styles I've trained, the one I'm doing now, they're heavily elbow-oriented. Elbows, in my opinion, are the single best move for self-defense. When you teach people how to use their elbows properly, even just flow drills with the elbows, it is one of the best tools because as I extend my arm to hit you, I open up my face. I open up my arm to damage. I open up my body to damage. But as I stay tight with elbows, I protect and I create a thorn. I create a horn right here that can drive right through you. And Casey Method trains this almost in the best way I've seen out of any style. So let's just look at that. Uh, uh, my goal is just to destroy what's in front of me. Okay. Now, how would you attack in that position? Uh, well, the same thing. And, uh -huh. and, you know, generally it's going to come out of what we have here. This is a social exchange. We're close enough. We're having a talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may not necessarily like what I have to say, which mm -hmm. starts to elevate intention. Mm -hmm. And then we will end up kicking it off. The same okay. thing if I want to attack you with the shape. <laughs> so it may just look like that. Beautiful. Okay, so what did we see right there? We saw an explosive elbow. That's the exact position I was showing. And he explodes into it, into the guy's face. Now, it's very hard to defend against that because you're also unlikely to get hit because that position protects you from getting hit. 
I love this guy's movement. Uh, he does a lot of stuff later on in this video against the wall. So what you see about Casey that's really, really nice is Casey, unlike combat sports, is dealing with pre-confrontation. He openly said, he's like, this is the situation we train from. We run the environment. They're out on the street. And if you look, what they're training is the moment before the fight. Now, combat sports do not teach you about the moment before the fight. You don't go into a jujitsu class, typically. And experience someone telling you, and you can see he's showing him the position. It is similar to how I do it. But you rarely go into a jiu-jitsu class and see people say, this is where the fight's going to start. It's going to be the guy crossing the street, and we're going to drill this. So someone's going to cross the street. They're going to look at you. They're going to raise their voice at you. And then you're going to have to put your hands up. You're going to have to put your chin down, but not aggressively and protect. If no one really covers that unless you're doing self-defense. Casey covers that. And another thing that Casey does is it covers environmental training very, very well. He goes up against the wall and starts explaining how he's using the wall as a frame and how you have to learn to feel your environment and use it as a weapon. And I think, again, that is brilliant. And the way he uses the wall to explode off, he uses his head nicely, too. These are unconventional weapons. I feel like Casey is a modernized self-defense version of Silat mixed with Filipino martial arts. If I just had to be totally honest with you, and I can't say that for sure, but just having trained Filipino martial arts my whole life, I really do see the similarities. And I, I really think it's incredible the way they move and the way they explode into that position. And they have a ton of drills of, with that too. They have a lot, a lot, a lot of drills where they're literally just exploding into each other. And again, that's so silat in Filipino martial arts, like destruct the limb, elbow to the limb. But you see what they do that you don't get as much in things like Silat and you don't get as much in Filipino martial arts is these focus mitt drills. You rarely in Filipino martial arts will put focus mitts and just attack the guy's head like that. And they're doing limb destruction, catch any. But these drills are great. Uh, in my opinion, the thing where they shine is in their, their checking, in the pensador. I think that is the real beauty of the entire system. I think where they start losing credibility is when they step outside of that and try and do more complex motor functions, which are unnecessary in a street fight. If you're already driving in with your elbows like this, see, that is already enough to finish a person. You don't have to start going into the more panantukan stuff. The reality about the panantukan stuff, and if you don't know what panantukan is, it's the empty hand elements, pangamot, panantukan of Filipino martial arts. And if you look at silat, they have those similar kind of movements where you parry, check, elbow, limb destruction. The reality is a lot of that stuff becomes very hard in the street um and uh here i guess this is a dvd they're showing on the so it's too bad because we can't see it full screen but you could see the movements they're doing i think that the simpler they keep it like right here this video this is the way you should train the system it's beautiful she's checking her head you're not getting a punch in her she's using that framed position and i think this element of casey is the most effective form of self-defense training that an average person can pick up to not have to worry about getting their head cracked. 90% of what you experience in a fight is an overhand right. It's a haymaker. Now, again, where I disagree is when they start turning it into a style where they punch, where they parry check. This is this is the, the, the gold of the system, this position where she's training here. And I do understand it's good to punch. But again, if you're teaching an average person, I mean, she's moving in nicely. She's able to protect herself. They try and sometimes get a little bit too complex with it. And I understand styles have to promote themselves. This is a style that was in, in Batman. And their ground fighting is interesting too. So you see, they use that same framework, that same, same base position for everything. If you want to teach somebody to be effective in fighting, keep it simple, stupid, is kiss. The kiss mentality is the best mentality. You have one position, one structure. Anytime you're in danger, you go to your structure. And you use that structure to cause damage and protect yourself even on the ground. Now, those elbows that he's showing on the ground, here's something I'll say about jiu-jitsu. I have, again, trained for over two decades. I love rolling in jiu-jitsu. But when you start adding in elbows on the ground and weird grindy stuff like grabbing my eyes, fish hooks, and I've gone to places where they do this, even just hard smacks to my head, my game changes. The way I fight has to change. And as good as I may believe I am at jiu-jitsu, punches come through because I don't train exclusively that way. I train to be a grappler. I train to fight other jujitsu guys. And there's a 
falling short in that because some of my instincts sometimes to go for an ankle lock in the way I do or to or to invert or to sometimes the way I get guard back, right, as I'm escaping. I'm not always controlling posture. I'm not always controlling your hips. I'm not always doing the things that would protect me from being hit because jujitsu has become a sport. I know it's going to piss off a lot of jujitsu guys, but there's a certain reality there. And supplementing with something like this where you're just learning, if you look at how he moves, you're just learning to drop your elbow in people. And by the way, I use this position on the ground. If someone's taking uh, top control on me, if they're going into side control and they're trying to put pressure down on me, I sometimes take the point of my elbow, I frame and I drive it into them so I can create space so I can shrimp out and shoot my hips in. This structure, having a strong structure, applies very well to jujitsu too. And again, these are these are great, great things in KC that I, I, I see so many people being like, KC doesn't work. It's this or that. Now, where KC loses me is they will start off doing this beautiful kind of entry, right? The pensador, beautiful entry. They have all these drills. They spar with it where people are hitting you or they drill at least with it. Live drilling, active drilling where your adrenaline will go up, where they protect their head. They're getting hit. But then they get into a position where they can clinch the guy. They get the arm. They can get control. They can keep elbowing and driving in. And they disengage and start doing other stuff like dropping to the leg. And I feel like it's just sometimes overly complex to be a film appealing system. And I think when Casey became popularized through the Batman movies, the Chris Nolan Batman movies, and then through the Reacher films, I think that hurt the style a little bit because it popularized the intricate stuff over the reality based stuff. And I understand you need that intricate stuff to appeal to new students. People see you come in, drop, hit the leg, come up hit here and then slam down on the head. And then you're doing all this cool stuff. But it's, again, the bread and butter of this system is that base pensador. And if anyone's watching this and wants to learn self-defense, the one thing you can take away from Casey, even without training it, just watch videos on it, is exploding into this position. Learn this position. Get your hands low. Just relax. And this is a great drill. Okay, so if you want to, even if you're a combat sports athlete and you want to benefit yourself for some self-defense, practice going from a passive, I call it a passive protective stance, hands up, chin down, looking at the person, elbows in, everything nice and tight. I'm protecting my carotid artery. If you have a knife and you come to stab me, at least this part of my arm is exposed, not the inside. And my neck and my shoulders are, my shoulder and my hand is covering my neck. So you're not getting to my carotid here. You see, I'm kind of hunched as opposed to being like this. Just start here. And then just explode into their pensador, into what I call the rhino. Bam! Like a weapon. Here, bam! And drive forward as you do it. So you're here, bam! That's an incredible drill for self-defense. Sorry, I just shook my whole table. To supplement your sport or your martial art, even if you're doing karate, if you're doing kyokushin, doesn't matter. It's a great, great element of this that anyone can learn. And in my opinion, again, makes this system one of the most effective. You see how he's just constantly framing on the ground. Um, again, here, beautiful. And they do multiple attackers. Super nice. And here, again, I don't see anything here that I don't like as much as people attack it. One of the things they do, again, which is very interesting, the only other system I've seen do this, beautiful movement. I mean, this is a cool way to train self-defense. Might look stupid, but if you look, he's never trying to expose his head to any opportunity to get hit. He does not sacrifice opening up to cause damage. He has to cause damage from the structured position. Um, and it's so simple. And it becomes so effective in a high-stress situation. Uh, so I like it. I think that this is a very, and you're just showing it from different positions. Here's some, some, and you can find these on YouTube. These are great drills for learning how to defend yourself. I would argue, I would argue that drills like this are more effective and important than doing combat sports non-professionally. Again, you cannot compare a professional combat sports athlete to a person who is going to the gym or is going to train three times a week and not necessarily spar full contact and go compete. Which one would I rather that person train, that, that civilian train? i rather them train this than train Muay Thai. That's the truth. This will probably protect them in a way where they're less likely to incur damage. They're bare knuckle. They're doing situational training. They're doing environment training. They're doing pre-confrontation. They're getting, they're learning the pensador position, which protects your head. They're in constant movement, by the way. And I'm sorry, 
in real confrontations, the stress response makes any complex motor function useless. You learn to respond to simple basic motor functions, which are extreme aggression. What is extreme aggression? And I've shown this many times before. Extreme aggression is a wild aggressive haymaker followed by another one. And this is what you see in fights. And the way you respond to that when your life is literally on the line is not by saying, let me be cool. Let me parry, check, backhand, elbow, clinch, shoot his head under, take him down. No, that's not how you respond to it. The way you respond to it is hug my head. Oh shit. Drive in, protect, 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 cause damage with my elbow. And maybe now I can clinch, but everything's simple up until that point. And this style, again, the major emphasis of that style is just that. So well done to them. Uh, I have a couple more videos here. The only style I've seen go down to the ground and hit the, so you see they're doing a, a little bit more flashy stuff here now. Because you're not going to do a jumping, spinning back kick to someone in a real self-defense style. That kind of stuff is just useless. Not useless. It's a great tool. It's a great tool to have in your bag. But again, if you have six hours a week or four hours a week of training, you want to practice that pensador position as much as possible against people hitting you with focus myths or putting on gloves and punching at you. You want to focus on closing the distance, low line kicking. But flying knees and all this stuff, you see now they're going, this is silat. This is classic silat in Panantupan. So I don't care what people say. That's when they go into the complex stuff, that's what that is. But again, I understand you have to sell your system. You have to make it flashy. They, they do these attacks to the inside of the thigh. And this is what I keep getting back to. They drop low and elbow the inside of the thigh or they hammer fist it. The only other place I've seen that in C is Silat. I've seen a lot of people bash the system because of that. What I will say about that is that I have been hit with these elbows on my thigh and my inner thigh and uh, hammer fisted there. And it hurts way more than you would expect. Now with adrenaline going, do I think it would stop me? I don't know, not necessarily, but it might take me down. I mean, some of them have dropped me to the ground really fast. Uh, and again, it's a totally weird experience when someone's in your face and then they change levels like they're going to shoot in on you. But instead of shooting in on you, they just rip an elbow to your quad. Like they literally drop to a knee and go, bam, that's a, such a Silat thing. You just like across your quad like that. And then they take your leg and keep grinding the elbow until you fall down. I mean, don't underestimate the effectiveness of things just because you don't see them in the ring. Because the second you see them in the ring, all of a sudden they're going to become the most popular thing in the world. Like that front kick that Leota Machida and Anderson Silva popularized, which is still used again uh, until today. Frankie Edgar got knocked out by one from Chito Vera. Uh, I believe Dominic Cruz got knocked out by one last year. You still see front kicks all the time. Everyone was saying they're useless until they started getting pulled off. It's the problem with combat sports is it's trend based. It's trend based. It's like if this is not working today in the ring, let's not even look at it until someone pulls it off in the ring. And again, I hate that mentality. I think it's idiotic. And I think a lot of people don't really, really, truly understand number one, that most people who train do not go compete in full contact MMA fights. If you're competing in jujitsu, that's not self-defense. Even Muay Thai is not really as aggressive and reality-based as what happens in a street confrontation. And again, it's very hard to simulate those situations in just sparring. You could do it with hard drilling. You could do it with adrenal stress response training, but it doesn't have to be, let's put on gloves, let's jab at each other and play with each other out here. No, that doesn't actually help you because that doesn't actually happen. No one's sitting there and playing jab games with each other in a situation where they want to take your head off. So a lot of the stuff we do, you know, no one's doing these kick trading things like you see in Muay Thai all the time where it's like, I'm checking your kick. I'm throwing a kick to your head. I'm stepping in. I'm kicking again. It's fun and games, but it makes you a better fighter. Doesn't, And it for sure helps you a little bit for self-defense, but it's not the true nature of self-defense. Uh, I've really rethought my position on self-defense a lot. I just love combat sports for myself. I like sparring. I like fighting. I like getting hit. It's just something that makes me feel alive. Uh, I love rolling in jujitsu, but I understand and appreciate the limitations of it to, to the point where I can say UFC is not the end all of everything. Yes. A UFC fighter will beat up 99.99999% of people. But 99.99999% of people who train BJJ, MMA, 
whatever it is, Muay Thai, are not becoming world champions or pro athletes in the sport and dedicating that much time. So again, you have to compare the guy who casually goes to an MMA gym three times a week or to a Jits gym in a street situation. Yes, if you take the jiu-jitsu guy and you put him in a ring with the Casey guy with rounds where you say he's allowed to shoot in, he's not allowed to get eye gouged. There's no concrete on the ground. There's no environment. We're going to have specific rounds. Then, yeah, he might take down the – there's a higher chance, in my opinion, that he will take down the KC fighting method guy and tap him out than the KC fighting method guy winning. But does that mean that in a situation on the street, forget who that person's fighting, just a random stranger, that the KC fighting method guy has the lower statistical chance, and this is what I believe, of being caught by a haymaker – and being randomly knocked out than ju the jiu-jitsu guy. So I don't care if the jiu-jitsu guy beats the Casey guy. I care about who's less likely to get knocked out in a street confrontation where wild haymakers are thrown. Uh, and where your life is on the line. And so, again, Casey with its pentador and its positions and its structure has a tremendous value. And yes, go do the other stuff. Go do jiu-jitsu. I think it's a very major component of self-defense or judo or sambo. Go train Muay Thai. Go train any type of style that has sparring. I think sparring is a vital part too. It builds conditioning. builds you getting used to getting hit. It makes you tough. But again, it is not the end all of self-defense and fighting. Take it with a grain of salt. It's up to you. You train how you want. But that's it. Those are my thoughts. I actually really, really like Casey fighting method. I would train it if it was near me. It would just be cool to go somewhere where I could train that position. And against resisting opponents, against people who are hitting me, and do situational training. Uh, I know there's a, a place in Portugal, so when I'm back there, I'm going to go visit them and shoot a video for you guys. Hope you liked it. Like and subscribe. Come on. I made this video even though I'm exhausted and I ranted like crazy. So just hit the bell and do all that, that stuff for me. Thanks.